Today's talk is about a journey. And like so many journeys, it begins in a car. But this is not your dreamy country vacation type. As my head flung back against the seats and the airbags pushed into my face, I woke up. As I got out of the car, commotion ensued. It was 10.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning, with locals taking their kids to play football. One of those locals, enraged in what he'd seen, took action. And as my head bounced off the concrete from his action, all I could think about was, I need to get away. But in hindsight, this was impossible. Who I was trying to get away from was myself all that time. I had just turned 21 years old, and I was on a personal slippery slope to nowhere. I had just smashed my car head-on into a wall after two days of drinking, partying, and taking drugs. I say I woke up, as I have no recollection of getting into the car. I was arrested and taken to the police station to be charged. To make matters even worse, I found myself in court for another 12 months. I was being sued by Sony and PlayStation for 45,000 pounds worth of damages for selling counterfeit goods around the markets here in Northern Ireland. Why is change so hard? It's what I thought a lot at that time. I would begin to understand more as I delved into self-development. I got back involved with what I've always loved, which has been exercise and fitness. And I joined the gym here in Derry and got my head into bodybuilding. After some encouraging words from the owner, Big Dave Fox, I borrowed his belief and his confidence in me, and I plowed that into everyday training and keeping fit and keeping healthy. I now had a purpose to my days, something that I didn't have before. And this is such a pivotal point when we're looking to create change. I entered the Mr. Northern Ireland NABA bodybuilding competition, and I now had a burning desire within me. I had a focus and something that I was putting my mind towards. Fast forward a year and I stood on that stage in a packed hall in Belfast and I claimed first place. All the sacrifice, dedication and hard work was now worth it. I was proud of what I'd achieved. As a personal trainer, I began to learn more about the body and the mind but it was only after more events of sabotage that I really wanted to understand why do we do what we do? What I discovered was we all have an internal mental blueprint, whether we are conscious of this or not. Our formative years play such a crucial role in what that identity and mental blueprint consists of. Our perceptions, our values, our beliefs, what we see and experience growing up, plays a huge role in who we think we are, what we think we're capable of, what we think we deserve, and so much more. So what I discovered was, my internal mental blueprint wasn't taking me to where I wanted to go. This resulted in two steps forward and three steps back a lot of the time. Now I'm sure you can relate. Maybe you might not have smashed your car head on into a wall, but you can relate to starting your fitness plan, maybe stopping, going to launch that new business, pull them back at the last moment. Why is that? Why do we do these things? So what I discovered was my internal mental blueprint wasn't helping me succeed. I grew up here in Derry, in Gallia, in one of the most economically deprived areas of the city. I'm the youngest of seven, and I grew up, like many in my area, with unemployed parents living on benefits. So what I discovered was my blueprint didn't teach me success, prosperity, abundance, confidence. In fact, it was quite the opposite. And my environment at that time molded that image further. You see, here's what's important. We all want growth or something more from this life. But if your internal blueprint has taught you the opposite of what it is that you're seeking, then that change can become so hard. I began to understand more of how to actually change that internal blueprint. I delved into self-development, books and psychology and mindset. And at that time, someone handed me the movie, The Secret. That began to wake me up. 
It woke me up to how important my thoughts were to my results, how important my energy and my focus was to my results, and how important my environment was to my results. I began to course correct and change my environment at that time, getting away from people who, through no fault of their own, were not supporting the growth I wanted to see or helping me succeed. Environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior, as James Clear so perfectly put it in his book, Atomic Habits. By me shifting my environment, I started to think different, feel different, and perform different. I took responsibility. Responsibility for my thoughts, my actions, my behaviors, my results. I stepped out of the victim mode and stepped up and took action. And you can too. Change happens through inspiration or desperation, as Jim Rowan perfectly put it. For me, it doesn't matter what the trigger is. What's important is to use that trigger to create discipline, desire, resilience, to show up in life as the version of you that you want to be. And we all can do that. Over the years as a personal trainer, I began to see the confidence and value in myself. I was helping other people achieve the results that they wanted to achieve in life. I was bringing value to other people's lives. And I want to ask you this question. What value can you bring to other people's lives that maybe you're suppressing right now? We can all create the changes that we want to see. How do we create that change? We shift that internal mental blueprint. We shift our identity what we think we're capable of and what we think we deserve in this life. We imagine change to begin with. We dream about something different. And then we make a committed decision to getting something different from this life. What I want to leave you with is one of my favorite quotes. It's from Jim Rowan again. Stand guard at the door of your mind every single day. His mentor, Earl Schof, taught him that lesson. I live by it, I apply it, and I teach it to other people. I'd empower you to do the same. Stand guard at the door of your mind every single day. Don't allow the negative influences of other people to drag you down, to tell you why you can't, why you shouldn't. Take back control of your mind. Take back control of what you allow into your mind. Step up, take action, and go after the things that you truly want to achieve in your life. The things that are meaningful you, to you, not what other people tell you you should do, you could do, or would do. This is about your life. This is about the things that you want to create and live how you want to live. So as I say, stand guard at the door of your mind, step up, and take action.